بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بهديه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته The author then says المواقيت المواقيت And the mawaqeet is plural of miqat. And obviously the miqat is connected to the word waqt. Time. He says, al-mawaqeetu qisman. Zamaniya wa makaniya. He says that the mawaqeet, two types of them. The first is that which pertains to time. And the second is that which pertains to location. فَالزَّمَانِيَ وَهِيَ أَشْهَرُ الْحَجْ شَوَالٌ وَذُو الْقِعْدَةِ وَذُو الْحِجَّةِ Obviously the times, the zones of Hajj and only Hajj here. We're not talking about Umrah. Umrah can be made any time throughout the year. He says, number one, the month of Hajj, the entire month of Shawwal, right after Ramadan. So this means, or how does this how does this pertain to what we previously explained? How do you start your Hajj in Shawwal? Based off of what we learned, how will someone start his or her Hajj in Shawwal? Such as. What name would that be? Huh? Al Qiran? That means he would have to remain in what? Ihram all of those months. So, in most cases, it would be talking about Tamatu. A Tamatu. He made Hajj, he made Umrah, and Shawwal, and then he did what? Came out of Ihram. Then he did what? Back to Ihram for Hajj. No? He says, so there's Shawwal, then there's Dhul Qa'da, and then there is Dhul Hijjah. Obviously, meaning the first what? Huh? Roughly, first 10 days, not the entire month. طيب. Then he says, Makaniya, actual location. وَهِيَ الَّتِي يُحْرِمُ مِنْهَا مَنْ أَرَادَ الْحَجَّةَ أَوْ الْعُمْرَةَ وَهِيَ خَمْسَةَ And the locations of the places which pilgrims, or people, they're not even pilgrims yet, with the intention of making a pilgrimage, do not pass, do not transgress until they have entered into the inviolable sacred state, the ihram state. So a person is already in the time, it's the Shawwal now, it's Dhul Qaeda, the end of Dhul Qaeda, towards the first of Dhul Hijjah, I'm going to make Hajj now. I'm going to perform Umrah from Medina, going to Mecca. And then from there, I'm going to go back to Ihram and make the Hajj, Naam. So it is unlawful for me to pass this location unless I've entered into the state of Al-Ihram. And obviously once I've entered into the state of Al-Ihram, the things that were normally halal now have become haram upon me, such as trimming my fingernails, such as giving my wife a kiss, such as covering my head, such as wearing normal clothes, as etc. Based off of what we what? Explained in detail. Now, and now it's time for the talbiyah. La baik, Allahumma la baik, etc. All the way until I begin my actual nusuk. Tayyip? Khairan, inshallah. So, there are five, he says. Number one, Dhul Hulayfa. Wa hiya aw wa huwa miqatu ahli al-madinati wa man marra biha. Wa tabu'udu wa amakata ila akhiri. Wa abu'udu ma qiti amaka. Number one is Dhul Hulayfa. And this is the miqat, this is the checkpoint um, for the people of Medina. This is the Hajj border, the Umrah border. Huh? For the people of Medina. And anyone who wishes to go to Mecca passing through Medina. Like many brothers and sisters do when they leave the United States. They go to Medina first. They perform Umrah from 
Medina, etc. So that's going to be your miqat. So therefore, if a person doesn't wish to get too much into the thick of things, I can't understand all that, I can't memorize all of that, I'm a simple basic Muslim, the only thing that he would have to focus on would be what? This. Dhul Hulayfa, that's it. I'm not coming from Syria, I'm not coming from Egypt, I'm not coming from Ethiopia, I'm not coming from Iraq, I'm not coming from these other parts of the world. I'm coming from New York City to Medina. So the only thing that I have to focus on is what? Dhul Hulayfa, that's it, period. Everybody turn this or not? Everyone understand this? That's the only thing that one has to focus on if that's what he or she is doing. As far as those who are coming from other locations, or as far as those who want to know more and want to learn all of it in a thorough manner, then you want to study the other four what? As well. The author says that Dhul Hulayfa is approximately 435 kilometers from Mecca. And this is the furthest of all miqats. The furthest of all miqats is Dhul Hulayfa. Tayyip? Number two, Al Juhfa. We hear Miqatu Ahl Shami, Wa Misr, Wa Man Hadaha, O Marabiha. We hear Karibatun Kurb Rabir, O Tabudu Al Makata, Mia Wathamin Kilometra. We are from Awihni Munasal and Min Rabir. Then there's Juhfa, which is the Miqat for the people of Syria and Egypt, and anyone who passes by the direction of Syria and Egypt. Then there's Yalamlam, the Miqats for the people of Yemen, and anyone who passes by that area of what? Such as huh? Dubai, you say Dubai, Oman, any other countries you say? UAE, anyone else? Tayyip. So let's ask a question. Let's take a country like Ethiopia. Where would they make Ihram from? From Yemen or from Egypt? Egypt. What you say? Egypt. Tayyip. Number four, he says, Qarnul Manazil. That which is called Qarnul Manazil. And this is the Miqat for the people of Najd and the people of Ta'if. And anyone who passes by that area, even if they're not from Najd, they're not from Taif. Then, last but not least, number five, he says, "That wa irqin, wa hiya min qatu ahl al Iraqi wa Khurasan wa Basit wa Shimal Najd wa man hadaha aw marra biha wa huwa wadin wa tusamma ila akhirihi." And then there's that irq, which is the miqat for the people of Iraq. And the people of Khurasan. Where is Khurasan today? What country is translated? Or what is Khurasan translated as what country today? Huh. Where is Khurasan today? Afghanistan. What other countries? Iran? Tayyip. He says here. هَذِهِ الْمُوَاقِيتُ لِأَهْلِهَا وَلِمَنْ مَرَّ عَلَيْهَا مِنْ غَيْرِهِمْ so those are the miqats for those who wish to make hajj and umrah i.e. if a person is going to Mecca or Medina or let's say Mecca he doesn't necessarily have to get into the state of ihram unless he intends to make hajj or umrah I'm going to study I'm going there as an engineer huh? I'm going there to visit someone methanin then obviously, if a Muslim is going to Mecca, why wouldn't you perform Umrah first? But that's not necessarily what? Mandatory. Turn this. Tayyip, moving forward. Man arad al hajjah min ahli Mecca ta ahrama minha. Wa man arad al umrah ta min ahli Mecca ta ahrama min al hill. Wa hu kharij al harami min jami' al jihad. The first point. Oh, he says here. Number two, من كان دون الوقيت فميقاته من حيث أنشأ حتى أهل مكة من مكة. As far as someone who lives within the miqat, he lives within the miqat, then their place of ihram is going to be wherever they are, including the people who live in Mecca. Back to this or not, with regards to Hajj and not Umrah. 
With regards to what? Hajj. Then it says, those who wish to make Hajj, people of Mecca, they make Hajj what? From their homes, as we just said. And as far as Umrah, then they leave the sacred area. Even though it's still a part of Mecca. There's the city, and then there's the Haram. Medina is the city, and then there's the what? The Hill. The lawful place that's outside of the borders of the sacred place. Even though it's all still part of Medina. Tayyib. إِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ تُرِيقُهُ عَلَى مِقَاتِ فَمِقَاتُهُ حَذُّ أَقْرَبِ الْمُوَاقِيتِ إِلَيْهِ فَيُحْرِمُ إِذَا حَذَى سَوَانْ كَانَ بِطَائِرَةٍ أَوْ سَيَّارَةٍ أَوْ بَاخِرَةٍ as far as if someone is passing or approaching Mecca and he's not in the direction of any of these miqats, then he needs to take the closest one possible. And to perform the ihram, regardless of the means of his travel, plane, boat, car, truck, riding beast, etc. لا يجوز لحاجنا ومعتمد تجاوز المقات بلا إحرام It is unlawful to transgress the miqat Without getting into the state of ihram, unlawful. You must do it from that place. And anyone who transgresses those miqats, he must go back. And then make your ihram from there. فَإِلَّمْ يَرْجِعْ أَحْرَمَ مِنْ مَوْضِعِهِ وَلَزِمَهُ دَمٌ وحجته وعمرته صحيحة. And if a person decides not to go back, it's too far. I just woke up. I just remembered. And we're 200 kilometers past the miqat. One says it's what? It's too far to go back. We're almost there. It's a three hour journey, four hour journey. Are we understanding this? Then it's your, your hajj and your umrah it can be done valid. It can be done in a valid way. But you must make a sacrifice. You have to offer a sheep. Huh? You have to make them blood. You have to pay extra. So what's worth it now? The miqat is three hours back. Or you make your ihram, you stop on the road, you go into the bathroom, in the car, or however you do it, and now you pay for an animal. How much does an animal cost on hajj? Sacrificial animal, roughly. They had the different offices, you go there and you pay for it. They give you a ticket. How much? How many how, how many how many dollars? Maybe four hundred? Anybody else? So what is what, what's worth it now? To pay the money or to drive back and then return? That's gonna be what? Relative from what? Person to person. He then says, "When ahram qabl al miqat saha ma al karaha," and if a person performs ihram before he even gets to the miqat, it's valid, but it's not a good thing to do. It's a bad thing to do. It's not haram, but it's not necessarily. Huh? It's, it's ill-advised. And the ulama of Islam says it's ill-advised because when a person is in the state of ihram for a very long time, that means he or she has to avoid those things for more time and is more likely to fall into them accidentally or just the sheer hardship we went into ihram six hours before we even got to the Lord Hunayfa. you may fall asleep cover your face cover your head hmm? so it's always best to minimize the time of those things being unlawful to you everybody clear on this or not so that's the end of the chapter of that of Hajj and Umrah and that wraps up what we wanted to do and what we wanted to take from this book with regards to Al-Hajj and Al-Umrah. Now, we've posted a few pieces of advice on the channel and many other fatawa on the channel as well. And inshallah, we'll do more fatawa and hopefully if there's enough time, more readings from other books, other hadiths, proofs and evidences, different views, etc. If there's enough time, bidhanillah, with regards to performing the Hajj successfully and correctly at a basic way, along with some extra garnishing as well. So I ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the mighty and the most high, the sublime, the exalted, to allow all of our brothers and sisters to come back safely, and they come back purified and cleansed from their sins and their errors, 
and they come back being the night Allah full of light and full of positivity for their communities and for their families. And we ask Allah Azza wa to allow them to benefit there and to allow their deeds to be accepted uh, and their hajj to be mabrur. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullahu khairan.